Hey, today, Sailors with Cars, we've got a 2013 Scion FRS. Cody, that's on USS Lincoln. Coming up. Hey, it's Michael, Sailors with Cars, take two. So today we've got Cody up here with us. Uh, Cody's brought his uh, 2013 Scion FRS and Cody's stationed on the uh, USS Lincoln. Yep. And before we start the interview, remember, we haven't done an interview in a while, so it might be a little rusty. Need everybody to hook, hook us up on uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Sailors with Cars. If you want to be interviewed, let me know. Michael at Sailors with Cars. We'll get you on the channel and we'll get it done. Cody, thanks for coming up. Yeah, thanks for having me. Talk to us a little bit about your uh, navy, uh, your navy background. We don't get to jet, we don't get to jump right into the car <laughs> yet. You've got to tell us a little bit about what you do in the navy. Yeah, so I've been in for about two and a half, almost three years now. Okay. Uh, I work with all the jet fuel, so I'm an ABF. Aviation, boatswain's mate, mate fuel. Fuel. Got it. The grapes. Yeah. Purple shirts for all you <laughs> aviators. You should know this. I know it and I'm an engineer. <laughs> so you just told us that you did an 11 month cruise on the ship. Yes. That's a long time. Yeah, it well, is. Thank you for your service it on is. that one. Whew, I hate yeah. to say it. That's yeah, we, a long we, ass time. Yeah, there was one point we were out for about 92, 94 days a straight. It's not fun. Beautiful weather too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's in, that was over by the Gulf too. Yeah, so yeah nice and hot. That was not fun. Nice and hot. All right, what have you brought us up today? It's my 2013 Scion FRS. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's not much done engine-wise or anything like that. It's just uh, some bigger injectors, uh, wider wheels and tires. They're 18 by nine and a half in the rear. Why the Scion? Why this car? Well, I've always loved, I, for a, since I came out, I loved the body of them. Okay. And then the only thing that steered me away from it was the motor that they used. So I was like iffy about it. And then once I drove it and like test drove it, I was like, I had to have it. So we talked about the engine a little while ago. So did they ever come with a turbo or they no. were always non-turboed no. engines? Just always non-turbo. There's people have been asking for years for Subaru and Toyota to give at least a turbo option for these cars and they will not do it. Hmm. But at the same time, it also gives you the, like these cars are brand new. They're only like 23, 24. I'm about brand. to say, it keeps the cost down. It does keep yeah. the cost down because they were talking about if they did turbo it, the price is going to jump to like 32. Yeah, now you're starting. competing. Now you're competing with the Toyota. Exactly. And then, you know, just below that, or just above that, if they were to turbo it, you've got the new Supra out there. Sure. That's like 45, 49. So. Yep. And, no. Yeah. I mean, and you're you got it close to the same. Yeah. You got it. You got to understand how that works. Yeah. It'd still be under 300, even if they turboed it. So you put the wheels and tires on it. You yeah. said you bought those when you came off deployment. Yeah. And those are very nice wheels and tires. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Those are nice. Well, let's take a look at that engine. All right. We're looking at the engine and like we said, it's not a turbocharged engine, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you said you might put a turbo on it at some time. Yeah. I'm actually planning to just, uh, build the whole bottom end. Forge rods, forge pistons, then uh, put a turbo kit on it from there. Yeah, I'm sure they make, I, I'm sure there's so many of these cars around, it, there's no lack of people with kits and and yeah. YouTube videos and everything else. Yeah, to, even, yeah, you know, even for these being a newer, newer car, you know, coming out in 2013, <clears throat> this is one of the first generation models. So even coming out as a newer car, you could say, there's still a lot of aftermarket support for these. There's a lot of room in there, my goodness, you know. Yeah. I mean, like there's the just back, a lot back, of room the for engine. The motors right here. Like, yeah, that's the I was looking at that because I'm looking down at the floor right here. You know, we were mentioning earlier the freaking oil filters <laughs> yeah, right there. How easy does that get? Oh, that, make, that makes everything so much yeah, easier. Yeah, I mean, change you, oil. All you got to do is get under it and drain it, and then you get right pop, back pop under down. it, put it down, and refill it, and put, the, put your filter back on right there on top. Yeah, you got to love that. Got to yeah. love that. So I'm sorry, it's a 2.3? 2.0. 2.0. Yeah, it's, it's just a 2.0. I'd put... Uh, 660 cc fuel injector clinic injectors and the Dietzworks 65c fuel pump. It's about uh, 265 liters per hour fuel pump. Was it pretty easy to put the fuel injectors in it? Yeah, it's actually pretty easy compared to uh, changing the spark plugs on this thing. Nice. That is not fun. Haven't no. done it myself. But Where do, you, do you have to change it from underneath? No, they are on the sides, on the side, like where the frame is. Really? Yeah. 
It's easier to see from this side if you come around here. They're like down inside here. Like this right here is oh, the yeah. coal pack. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so you barely, you, there's like barely any room. Yeah, but the good thing right. is you don't have to change spark plugs very often yeah, anymore. No, I mean, that's, it's the, not, that's the best part about it. You live in there forever. Yeah, it's like 100,000 miles. Exactly, exactly. But I mean, you know, whenever I pull it out, you know, change pistons and everything, yeah, might as well start some new ones. Well, yeah. All right. But, uh, they're like $20 a piece. <laughs> Because you, I can't, I couldn't find them at O'Reilly's or anything like that. So no, that'd be I had to get them from the dealer, and they're like twenty bucks a piece. Nice. Let's take a look at the inside. All right, of course, Cody's on the inside of his car, and uh, he's going to talk us through a little bit of what's going on here. So earlier we were talking about the seat restraints, and uh, he said are good till the end of this year for racing. Yeah. Well, June of next year. Oh, June of next year. Yeah. And you had replaced, uh, so what seat is that that you're in? That's it's an energy uh, fixed seat. It does not recline. It sits just like this constantly. But it's actually pretty comfortable once you like get in here and sit down and get in there. Have you driven it? No, she, does, she refuses to drive stick. No, I think I won't do it. She refuses to drive stick. <laughs> is, it the, is it a Miata stick? No, nope, it's an automatic. Really? Wow. So this is the original seat right yes, here. Yes, these are the original seats. And then uh, you, the only thing is I just have this the headrest flipped around. Yeah, I'm about to say the headrest looks uh, kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, it's just flipped around. Got Makes it. it a little easier for, because it sits like angled forward. Oh, so yeah. So it's, it feels weird. And you said this is not a roll bar, but it's a stabilizer bar? Yeah, it's it's a, basically it's just a harness bar to be able to mount the harnesses in here properly without having them like bolted to the seat or bolted somewhere in the back of the car. Was that hard to put in? No, actually it wasn't. It just bolts at the tops where the uh, the factory seat belts come, oh, come down. Oh, 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 I got you. I so got you. it just basically you just take that bolt out, put in, put the new bolts in. And right into the frame? Yep. Did well, it goes down where the, uh, this, the, actually the bottom of the factory seat belt was. Oh, it goes right in there. Yeah, so oh, so it, you have to drill into the frame nope, or anything? No, didn't have to drill nothing in. And then those support bars, this thing is rigid. It does not move at all. Nice, nice. Any other, uh, of course it's a stick shift, yeah. six speed. Yeah. Um, nothing else done to the inside? No, not yet. Uh, All right. What Definitely, do you want I'm to do? planning on getting a different shifter. Short shifter? Uh, well, yeah, but it's uh, this tall. I'm about to say. The IRP short shifter. Oh, because yeah, that's I, a pretty short shift. Everybody in Porsche that has a stick wants, you know, it's all about the short. I don't. I have a standard shifter in mine. I'm like, I've driven a short shifter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I well, don't. The, the shifter that I plan on getting, it actually reduces the throw more than an actual shorter shifter does. Hmm. It reduces it by 60% instead of like 28 or 30. Nice. So oh, well. that'll be nice. Sounds like you got lots of money to spend. No, not really, but you know. <laughs> All right, let's go for a ride. All right, so Michael, Sailors with Cars. Yeah, we're gonna go right. We're here with Cody. We've got our mask on because of course we don't want to spread the funk. We don't have the funk, neither one of us do. No, definitely not. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go down here and go straight. And talk a little bit. It's got a little bit of exhaust noise. Yeah. It's a uh, catless headers, catless overpipe, catless front pipe, catless everything. There's no cats left on this car. Just straight back. Yeah, except for it just has a Flowmaster 40 muffler under it, and that's it. Nice. Nice. So, have the police ever given you shit? No, they haven't actually. And I have went. I went past the cop at a decent speed. I'll say that much. I'm not gonna uh, incriminate myself here. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I don't know what. I know they have the new law, but I don't know. Whatever it is, what it what is. What was it? The sound law. Uh, if you're above a whatever dust belt. They want it. Another reason for them to give you a ticket. If they want, right. You know. But you know, I don't have. Uh, I'm not registered in California either, so that's a different story. Oh, here we go. I wondered what they were doing. He must be building a shop. I've been hearing these tractors like forever. Oh, I yeah. They were built. Something. Uh, so you want to track the car someday. Is that the goal? Yeah. I, I actually would love to start going to a track. I've never been able to be on a track, so it'll be a different experience for me. Yeah, there's like I said, there's a lot of organizations that... Uh, uh, so the guys, it used to be they would autocross at uh, at the old uh, Charger Stadium, or yeah. Qualcomm as we call it, but uh, can't do that anymore because it's gone away basically. So the one club that I was mentioning earlier, they're all going up to Lake Elsinore okay. and they're using a, uh, 
I think it's a, I don't know what kind of parking lot it is, but it's a little bit smaller, but it's a lot smoother. Okay. So, because usually on the autocross, it's usually right at a mile, the course. Okay, I got So, um, I think it's, I, I don't know if it's as long, I, th I just think it's a little bit less than what it was at Qualcomm, but anyhow, they go up there, but that's a long haul. I mean, if you're, if you're taking your car up there, it's a long drive. A lot of guys, you know, they'll, they'll uh, trailer their cars up, but yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a... How far is that? Oh, uh, shit. I'm it, not from here, It's so. a good... It took it two hours north on the 15. Oh. That's where you'll that, go. That's about how long it takes me to get to L.A. Because Adams Motorsport Park is up there. I've been wanting to go there, too. Yeah. So. So how long do you have left on the Lincoln? I was going to ask you that. Um, I get, I either get out or uh, re-enlist uh, January, or I mean, not January, uh, July of 22. Oh, so you got some time left. Yeah, I still got another two years left here. But you can you can always go to a big deck amphib also, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I could go to. That's basically all I have, honestly, for sure. Or, I mean, for sea duty, it would be either big deck amphib or yeah, an amphib or carrier. Which you should try the amphib. Yeah, one of the guys that I work with, he's a second class. His first ship was an amphib. And he said it is completely different. Yeah, because the flight ops are a lot less straight. You're not flying 12 hours a day. Yeah, and I will say one thing. The one thing I hate the most has got to be CQs. Yeah. Carrier qualifications. Oh, my God. That yeah. is horrible. Yeah, you guys are, I mean, anything with flight quarters, you guys are under the gun. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I would rather be on deployment running cyclic ops instead of the CQs. Because CQs, you, they fly until 1, 2, 3, 4 in the yep. morning and restart again at, like, 11. Yep, we're going to go left. So it's quite ridiculous how much yeah. flying gets done during the CQs. I only did one Amphib. And the, when we did flight quarters on Boxer, I was like, really? Is this it? Yeah. It's just too easy. You know, when I'm going to park my car, usually I, yes, that's where I would park. <laughs> right, like right there on the side of the road? Come on, buddy. I don't think so. But yeah, no, uh, like I said, I got it tuned last week. I think it was uh, Friday last week. You want to get on it a little bit? Yeah. You can. Awesome guys, they know 
know what they're doing. Good. Uh, like I said, like I said, my friend that's got his BRZ that's turboed 500 at the wheels. They tuned his BRZ as well, and that's uh, how I found out about them is from through him. Good. So it's good to have hookups. Well, thanks for coming up. Thanks for bringing a car. Thanks for your service. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we brought the car back in the garage, or up in the shop, sorry, and we went for a great ride. Car scoots right along, handles well. Uh, Cody, thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, thanks in for this, having me. In this COVID-19 uh, distancing, uh, don't touch anything or breathe on anybody society that we seem <laughs> to be in at the moment. Uh, but don't let that stop you from hitting up the channel on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Michael at Sailors with Cars, always looking for people to interview. Don't have to be in the Navy, Air Force, Army, police, fire, you name it, we'll interview, bring it up next time.